Uh, this report really emerges from probably three lines of um, work. One is a growing understanding in the country of the nature of high quality science instruction. Uh, it's not a new vision, but it's a vision that has been informed by recent uh, developments in science education research and a great deal of knowledge generated by science teachers in American schools. A second line of work that's relevant to this is that we have become increasingly clear as a country about the centrality of teacher quality in terms of student learning and engagement in our schools. And a third line of work is an understanding that teaching is a profession. And as all professionals have to do, teachers have to learn their career over their lifetime. And so the committee was charged with, coming, uh, with doing a synthesis of research on teacher development in teacher preparation, early career um, support programs, and in professional development programs. And in addition to synthesizing those literatures and bringing them together to provide concrete advice and helpful advice to school districts as they try to mount systems of support for their science teachers. Of all the in-school factors that matter to students' learning and engagement, teachers are the most important. We also know that teachers need to learn new knowledge and new skill over the course of their careers. They need to know new science as scientific knowledge expands. They need to know more about instruction. They need to know constantly new knowledge about children and how to meet their needs. What many people don't know is that teachers have inequitable and uneven opportunities to learn. And this is going to seriously impact whether or not they have an opportunity to realize the new vision of science education that has emerged in this country. For instance, elementary school teachers, for the last 10 years at least, have been discouraged from teaching science, yet this new vision asks them to teach science in a way that they themselves have never learned. Similarly, middle school and high school teachers have been pushed to cover the curriculum and not to dig in deep to specific ideas and engage students in learning both the nature of science and concepts and ideas that are important to scientific understanding. In order for teachers to rise to the occasion of this exciting new vision of science education, they're going to need lots of different kinds of opportunities to learn. And so this country should care about this report and care about how to help school districts um, support teachers, science teachers in their school districts, because every investment that we make in those teachers is an investment in our children. The central message of this report has several components. One is that the vision of science teaching that has emerged recently in this country is one that is going to require enormous learning on the part of all educators. This, I note, is not an indictment of the science teacher workforce in this country. There are many caring and competent science teachers who are already working in US classrooms. But the vision of science teaching that is embodied in the framework and in the NGSS standards is going to require learning by all people in the educational system. A second part of the report is that teacher learning takes place in all sorts of settings. It takes place in formal professional development experiences on weekends, in summers, after school. It takes place in teachers' classrooms as they're working with their students on a daily basis. Some of that learning is formal, some is informal, some is structured, some is serendipitous. And if we are going to build support systems for teachers, we have to think broadly and systemically about how to take advantage of those many different places where teachers can learn to teach science in meaningful ways. A third message of the report is that although it's important to think about the individual teacher and what the teacher needs to learn and know and become able to do, it's also important to think about the educational system and the policies and practice that, practices that teachers work in and are surrounded by. These are things like how we hire and retain good teachers, how we evaluate teachers and what messages we give them about how to improve their practice how we build learning communities in those schools, how we teach instructional leaders and teacher leaders to lead educational reform in those schools. In the end, there's no silver bullet here. 
There is no one single way that we are going to be able to fix the problem of science education in this country. This is a long-term effort. We need everyone to help. And we need to think in complicated ways about how to provide teachers rich opportunities to learn, how to put materials in their hands that will be exciting for students, and how to give them the time that they need in order to offer a rich science instruction to all students. We cannot afford, as a country, to reserve these kinds of learning opportunities just for a privileged few teachers. We need all teachers in this country to have these kinds of opportunities to learn in order to make sure that all students in our country find science rich and exciting parts of their lives. Thank you.